to H2O Stream. This is Martin for H2O Global News with Scott Parker, Senior Design Manager for Corolla Engineers. In response to strict treatment requirements, Sacramento recently completed a decade-long upgrade to its regional wastewater plant. For this project, Echo Water, Corolla worked on planning, design and engineering. So hello Scott, how are you? Doing well, thanks. That's good to hear. So I'll get straight into the questions. So first of all, could you tell us about your professional background? Absolutely. I, I've been with uh, Corolla Engineers uh, since 1992. Um, started there out of my uh, graduate studies program at uh, UC Berkeley, where I got a master's in civil and environmental engineering. I Before that, I had attended uh, University of California, Los Angeles, uh, and got a civil engineering undergrad degree there. Um, since that time, I've been primarily focused on uh, water and wastewater treatment projects, I planning, designing, and constructing them throughout the uh, Western United States. Oh, that's fantastic. So plenty of experience there. So just to, to look at the project as a whole, uh, how important is the Sacramento River for it? Uh, the Sacramento River provides uh, approximately two thirds of the uh, fresh water to the state of California. Uh, for those that may not be aware, um, the northern part of the state receives the majority of the precipitation, while the southern portion of the state has most of the population. Um, so it, it, there's been an incredible amount of uh, treatment works and uh, conveyance works that have been uh, implemented in California that uh, uh, convey uh, a, a significant amount of water from uh, northern California to uh, the central and southern California towns and, and farms for irrigation. Um, and really the, 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 the centerpiece of that conveyance is the Sacramento River since that's where most of the uh, uh, precipitation occurs. Uh, it's a very essential part of our, uh, our natural infrastructure in terms of being able to distribute water to the people of California. Okay, so um, so how did the California Regional Water Quality Count, uh, Control Board's regulations create the need for the upgraded facility? Well, under pressure from, from a, a number of uh, water agencies and some concerns about uh, nutrient loading in the uh, Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta, that's where the uh, Sacramento River essentially terminates on its way through uh, into San Francisco Bay and out into the ocean. Um, they were seeing uh, elevated levels of uh, nutrients in the Delta, which they uh, were thinking were contributing to uh, some uh, mortality issues with the local species. Um, so they came down with an order that uh, required the uh, what's now regional SAN uh, uh, to uh, meet the uh, requirements uh, to uh, limit uh, nitrogen discharges to the bay to not more than uh, 10 milligrams per liter. Uh, the regional sands treatment plant, I, I had used a, a pure oxygen, oxygen activated sludge process prior to that, that time, uh, which is not, uh, it's not feasible to uh, remove nutrients in that process. It's a very high rate, uh, short uh, duration process. It's very effective for large plants, uh, but it does have the limitation that uh, in of itself as secondary treatment, it cannot uh, achieve the appropriate levels of nutrient removal that were required to meet the permit. So uh, the next question, obviously the most important one, what is the Echo Water Project and how does it work? Yes, uh, so the Echo Water Project was is essentially the program that was needed to meet the nutrient requirements uh, for the discharge, as well as uh, there was an additional requirement I didn't mention earlier about uh, essentially discharging only tertiary quality water. Um, that's essentially a standard that's used in California for unrestricted reuse, meaning that that water can be used on any food crop or any uh, turf irrigation, uh, any uh, reuse that it's essentially an unrestricted product then. Uh, so those requirements were also included in the regional board's permit uh, uh, for all dry weather flows. So the Echo Water Project was uh, the district's uh, I launch into meeting these new requirements. Um, essentially, it, it became a 13-year program 
uh, to upgrade the treatment plant uh, essentially in its entirety um, to meet these new permit conditions. Um, involved, I, I believe, a total of 22 projects, if memory serves correctly. Some of those were completed in-house, others were uh, completed by, designs were completed by consultants, all managed under the uh, Echo Water program. Yeah, so just to, just to carry on in that theme there, could you give us a history of the design and development of Echo Water? I, yes, it started with some master planning work that was done prior to the uh, permit being adopted and um, then rolled through a facilities plan, um, which looked at a number of different options for uh, treatment efficacy. Um, ultimately, it was decided that uh, going to biological nutrient removal was going to be the most cost effective and uh, I applicable approach to uh, meeting the nutrient requirements. And then uh, there was also a considerable amount of pilot testing that was done to uh, study different uh, tertiary treatment uh, alternatives um, from, uh, you know, cloth type filters and multimedia uh, filters. I, I membranes were considered. Um, this pilot test I served a number of different purposes, um, being able to utilize the uh, biological nutrient removal process that was proposed in conjunction with the tertiary uh, gave them a, a very strong uh, handle on what to expect in terms of effluent quality. Um, it also allowed uh, the regional sand to optimize the treatment works uh, in, a, in a way that saved uh, considerable money and, and quite a bit of site footprint uh, by uh, optimizing filtration and uh, chemical dosage for disinfection. Now, I, once the facilities plan was adopted, they broke the program into a number of different uh, projects. At, at that time, the, the program was thought to be somewhere between you know, 1.7 and 2.1 billion dollars to build. Um, obviously, to to hand that to one project to get done would have been a considerable effort. Uh, so they broke it into a number of different discrete projects that could be managed simultaneously under the program. Um, and just transitioning into your your next question, what Corolla's involvement was in our, in the project. Uh, Four of those major projects were uh, designed by us, and we also completed a number of the smaller efforts that were part of the program. But the uh, flow equalization was a big part of the uh, Echo Water program. I, one of the means to limit the capital expenditures on the uh, biological nutrient removal was to limit its size and push any excess flows the treatment plant I uh, received into equalization storage. Um, and so of that, we designed new basins that total about 430 million gallons of storage that when they received their peak wet weather flows, were able to uh, uh, shunt those flows into uh, lined equalization basins uh, for storage until the peaks pass and uh, then pull that water uh, out of the equalization during uh, lower flow periods and, and treat that appropriately. And that uh, allowed them to to limit the size of the biological nutrient removal process uh, considerably and, and save costs there. Um, so that was one of our projects that we uh, performed for the district. Um, very neat project. Uh, it uh, we developed some automated washdown systems so that uh, operators wouldn't be out there manually cleaning these basins. Um, they, they, we did a complete plant uh, cutover um, where we were uh, looking at doing some uh, plant effluent recycling through these basins to help with temperature limits uh, for discharge. Um, there was just a lot of really neat features on that project that I uh, um, won a number of awards. I, but that's complete and, uh, and is up and operational. Um, we also performed uh, three other designs for three other major projects there at the uh, as part of Echo Water. Uh, the return activated sludge pumping. Uh, they utilized their existing clarifiers for the uh, nutrient removal process, but because these new bioreactors were you know larger and higher in elevation, um, we needed to design a retrofit uh, return activated sludge system. To be able to return the the, the um, 
I activated sludge uh, from the clarifiers once it's settled to the uh, bioreactors and uh, designing a system that I uh, uh, collected the uh, I, I, the return activated sludge from these uh, existing clarifiers and uh, it had to be used for both their pure oxygen system for a, a, a few years until the, the BNR was done and then transitioned over to be used for BNR uh, thereafter. Uh, also had a number of very challenging uh, shutdown constraints. Uh, these clarifiers were in active use while we were doing this project. So it made a very, uh, a very complex project from a, uh, a commissioning standpoint to, to implement and, and, and make operational for the district uh, while they were still running their treatment plan. Um, the third project uh, was a nitrifying side stream project uh, that we were partnered with uh, AECOM on. Um, this project, uh, essentially, they, they utilize um, large storage basins for their uh, digested sludge, where the uh, residuals continue to degrade over time. Um, and when those uh, stabilize, and as those uh, residuals degrade, they release uh, nutrients, particularly nitrogen, ammonia, back into the recycle stream that comes around to the uh, head of the plant. Um, so those nutrients, um, if captured and treated separately, also uh, help with the uh, optimization of the biological nutrient removal. So the NST is a side stream treatment plant that uh, uh, uses an SBR process to remove extremely high concentrations of ammonia from the side stream, uh, oxidize it uh, into nitrate, and then this uh, the product from this uh, side stream treatment uh, plant is utilized as a um, uh, an odor control liquid phase odor control the nutrient or, or nitrate rich uh, effluent from this plant I uh, can be used in the collection system sewers um, when injected in the collection system sewers it, it substantially reduces the amount of H2S and other uh, odor causing uh, compounds that are typically in in the wastewater I uh, so that was a another novel project that I uh, uh, met the district's needs uh, and and was able to uh, help optimize that uh, biological nutrient removal process. Finally, the uh, the last the capstone project for Corolo again we were teamed with uh, AECOM on either uh, they were our, our sub I uh, was the uh, tertiary treatment facilities project. Um, this essentially included everything downstream of the uh, biological nutrient removal and secondary treatment process. Um, including uh, lift pumping, uh, filtration, uh, disinfection, uh, utility water distribution, um, dechlor uh, dechlorination, um, and you know prepping final prep for the uh, effluent to be discharged into the river or to uh, be a source for our current harvest water project. Um, some of the notable features of this uh, tertiary treatment project uh, included uh, California for uh, since the adoption of the uh, water recycling regulations has used very prescriptive uh, uh, filtration and disinfection criteria for the uh, for the uh, uh, adequate treatment uh, to meet the tertiary treatment standard or unrestricted reuse standard. Um, what we were able to do as part of this project was to push those limits through that pilot testing work to demonstrate that we could meet uh, all of the uh, pathogen reduction uh, using higher filtration rates and much lower uh, disinfection criteria over uh, what's been adopted in the past uh, for the prescriptive criteria. And that, that was huge in terms of savings of uh, you know project expenditures and also in plant footprint. Um, by doing so, we were able to fit these uh, tertiary treatment facilities within a uh, particular area of the plant that preserved a tremendous amount of uh, uh, space, uh, land area for future expansion. Um, so that was, I think, one of the, the key achievements of that tertiary treatment project, uh, that uh, we're able to do so much more with less. And 
Uh, much of that's due to the fact that uh, those prescriptive requirements that uh, California published, uh, you know, obviously was based on uh, good science at the time, um, were based on a, using a, a, a total chlorine uh, requirement necessary to achieve the viral reduction, virus reductions. Um, but because we were implementing a, a, a biological nutrient removal process and removing that ammonia from the water, uh, the disinfectant used is essentially free chlorine, which has a much uh, more potent uh, impact on the pathogens. Um, and, you know, the, the disinfection can occur in a with a much lower dose and a much shorter contact time. Um, and, you know, we were able to, you know, make use of that and, and extreme, you know, substantially downsize the uh, disinfection facilities uh, to, to meet the objectives. So. That was our primary involvement in, in the Echo Water program. Uh, you know, those four major projects, again, we designed some minor structures also around the plant, uh, new heavy equipment maintenance for them and, and a few other projects. But uh, that, uh, that, that really, you know, uh, is our, our, key, uh, our key contributions here. Excellent, there's a lot, a lot of things came together there. So, you know, with them all together, what are the key benefits of the upgrading facility? Uh, well, the key benefits is that all the uh, regional board's objectives in terms of their NPDES permit uh, have been achieved uh, and been achieved uh, within the time frame that was set forth. Um, you know, this was a monumental undertaking. You know, I, I, I've i seen stats that it was the largest you know, infrastructure project in the Sacramento area. I, I don't, you know, I have absolutely all the numbers to back that up, but it certainly was a, a massive project, I, you know, running over 13 years um, you know, multiple, you know, almost a couple dozen projects. I, I, you know, a program that it was monitoring the the cash flow and the schedule all the way through, uh, working proactively with their contractors and their designers to to make sure everything got implemented. Um, plus, it uh, now provides a uh, water resource for the region. Um, you know, we can talk a little bit about uh, what our next step is, and that's this uh, harvest water program which essentially is distributing then that unrestricted reuse water. Uh, we expect to distribute about 50,000 acre feet um, to 16,000 acres of crop area in the Southern Sacramento County. Um, we're currently uh, in design with most of those projects, one of which has already bid, a couple of them are in bidding right now. Um, it's essentially a, a, about a half a billion dollar program that the district got a, a, a substantial grant for to uh, bring this water from the treatment plant and, and effectively reuse it in an area where uh, you know irrigation the irrigation is currently uh, sourced from groundwater wells. Um, so by using this uh, in lieu of the groundwater, we we essentially get an in lieu re recharge uh, going on. Um, and the science is saying that we expect about a 35 feet foot recovery and the groundwater table in the area where this water will be used um, by distributing this water to the growers. So it should have an enormous impact on the on the ecosystem in the area. A lot of those uh, riparian forests that are, uh, you know, fed with groundwater during our dry summers, I, you know, rely on that groundwater table to be able to uh, survive. Um, our river systems, the Kasumas River in the area, um, typically goes dry during the summertime because of the extensive groundwater use as the, the groundwater pulls the, the water away from the river. Um, so the intent is by distributing this water, we're able to restore many of those ecosystems in the area um, and, and get the river flowing for the, uh, uh, the migrating salmon and other species that use the river. And then also a lot of the migratory birds that also use the area for excuse me wintertime my uh, habitat so um, again a lot of that's being paid by and paid for with a grant but it wouldn't have been possible without the echo water uh, program teeing that up and providing this uh, uh, tremendous uh, recycled water resource that uh, could be distributed to these growers that's fantastic so uh, just to move on what what are the, what could other projects uh, learn from the revolution the echo water project 
Well, I, I, I think this was, uh, you know, a, a, I'm sure that everybody sees a uh, large infrastructure projects and the thoughts always go to, well, how, how far is it going to run past the schedule and how much over budget is going to be? I, I think that the, I, the leaders there, Regional SAN and their program managers took a, a very uh, effective approach to uh, implementing a project of this nature. They, they brought the right staff. Um, you know, I looked at the right uh, elements to make a project like this successful, even partnering with the contractors in many ways to, to make sure that the project went off, you know, on schedule and on budget. And, uh, you know, I think that's just, you know, a, a, a huge achievement to be able to bring in such a massive effort within your stated budget and within the time that the, uh, the regulatory agency says that you have to get it done. Um, you know, that's just, you know, something that's very difficult to achieve in today's, uh, you know, infrastructure implementation environment with, you know, all the environmental considerations and everything else that you must go through to get a project uh, launched and, and effectively constructed. Um, to be able to do that at such a high level, um, I, I think is just, you know, a, a great achievement. Um, so, you know, again, I think, you know, appropriate planning, I, you know, it, taking taking a project like this on for other other agencies and and uh, other you know I it can we we demonstrated it can be done um it, it's it's a matter of working proactively amongst your team i uh, from the owner to the program manager to the designers and the constructors and construction managers um all need to be pulling towards the common goal of uh, uh seeing the, the you know the endpoint i uh, and not taking your eyes off of it and and, and essentially uh, keeping that the focus that uh, doing quality work and getting everything done uh, within the time that's allotted. So I, I believe there's a lot of <laughs> lessons learned that can be uh, taken forward uh, for other projects uh, in how to achieve that. Um, you know, it even comes down to effective negotiations with the with the, your regulatory agency uh, plays a big part in, in in making sure you can achieve your objectives. Fantastic. So as, as the final question, uh, what are Corello's plans for the future? Is there anything else you'd like to share about Corello? I, well, again, we're, we're partnered uh, with uh, another firm, uh, Brown and Caldwell, and we're serving as the program manager for this Harvest Water project. So I, you know, I've got another I uh, three, four years of working with this client. I, and I, it's been great, you know. It, uh, um, it getting a lot of positive uh, feedback from the growers and this uh, new water source that they'll be able to tap into. I, uh, you know, we're we're just uh, looking forward to getting that project through construction and and uh, successfully operating for uh, Regional San. Um, you know, they've been a, a, a great client of ours and a, and a great partner. Um, we we really, you know we've significantly enjoyed our our time working with them. You know, had hundreds of staff working for them on these various echo water projects, and I uh, look forward to the uh, continued opportunity to serve them through this harvest water program. That's excellent. So I mean, first of all, it, it sounds like an exciting future ahead. So I'd like to uh, thank you very much for your time answering those questions. Uh, I'd say thank you to our audience, and so from H2O Global Stream, uh, uh, goodbye and thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.